Hi again everyone, I'm Chris Tisdale and I'm a mathematician at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. And in this presentation I'm going to give a basic introduction to a special metric space. And in particular we're going to look at vectors in Rn and we're going to discuss a way of measuring distance between those vectors or those points in Rn. Now the nature of this presentation is reasonably elementary. You don't need a lot of mathematics to follow along. Now I'm pretty confident that a final year high school student could follow along. Now in a follow-up video I'm going to go a little bit further and show that this pair here, the set and the distance function or the metric if you like, actually forms a complete metric space. That, that's a lot more challenging. But the nature of this particular presentation is reasonably elementary. So let's get started. Okay, so in this section I'm going to discuss a general way of measuring distance between points or vectors in Rn. And to do this we use a, a function known as a metric or a distance function. Now, believe it or not, there are many ways of measuring distance between two points or two vectors. Now mathematicians realized this and around 1900 they sat down and really gave some basic definitions of what basic qualities uh, functions that are used to measure distance should have. And they came up with the following. Suppose x is some set. So think of x as Rn or the real line if you like. And suppose d is some function that's defined on the cross between x and x and is non-negative. We call the function d a metric or a distance function on x. If for all points or elements in our set big X, we have the following. Well, the distance between two points or two elements is always non-negative and furthermore the distance between two points or elements is zero if and only if here x equals y. So this first property is known as the, the metric or the distance function being positive definite. Okay, so it's zero when x and y are equal to each other and it's actually positive everywhere else. The second desirable quality of this distance function or metric is that it's symmetric. So the distance between x and y is the same as the distance between y and x. So we would say that such a function d is symmetric. And lastly, if I have three elements or three points x, y and z, then the distance from x to z is less than or equal to the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z. So this is like a, a general triangle inequality. Okay, so if we have a function d that satisfies these three properties, then we call the pair, the set and the distance function, a metric space. Okay, now in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a way of measuring distance between points or vectors in Rn. So throughout the rest of the presentation this set big X is just going to be Rn. Okay well let's look at this distance function or metric here. Suppose these boldface characters represent vectors in Rn. I'm going to introduce the function d sub p where p is some number greater than or equal to 1 defined in this fashion. So essentially if you wanted to calculate the distance between two vectors what you would do is you would 
look at the corresponding components, take the difference, take the absolute value, raise it to the power p, then sum from i equals 1 to n, and then take the pth root. Now this is quite abstract, so if we wanted to expand on this a little bit more, let's look at some special cases. Okay, so let's just choose the most simplest case. So let's say um, n equals 1 and say p equals 1. Okay, well, if n, if n equals 1, then the summation sign disappears, and if p equals 1, then the powers disappear, and essentially these are just, uh, the vectors are just real numbers. So, expression 1, so I don't put the bold face in anymore because these are just real numbers. Oops, sorry, let me just fix that up. It's just the absolute value of this difference. Okay, so we're working in the real line here, and this um, is a, a big simplification of this. Okay, well, let's choose another sim reasonably simple case. Let's work in the plane, n equals 2, and let's say uh, p equals 2. Then one's going to become the following. Well, the vectors a and b are going to be a1, a2, and b1, b2. So what we do is we take the difference, absolute and square, so you don't need the absolute, va the absolute value signs for this particular case, and you sum and then take the, in this case, the square root. So it's going to be something like this. Okay, so again, these two met metrics, if you like, or distance functions, should look familiar to you, just from basic work in the real line and in the plane. Now notice here, I've got a subscript of P, and there's no real subscripts of P up here. All, all this is designed to do with having the subscript down here, is to show that the metric does depend on the choice of, of this number P. Okay, now, the main focus of this particular presentation is showing that this, for all p greater than or equal to 1, this really does satisfy these three properties of being a metric. And so if you couple this with the set Rn, you get a metric space. Okay? Now to do that, I'm going to need the following result due to a mathematician called Minkowski. Um, now this reference here is to a, an earlier video on this inequality and in that video I said that I would show some mathematical applications of, of Minkowski's result in other areas of, of mathematics. So loosely speaking, this video that you're watching now can be thought of as a, uh, an application of Minkowski's inequality. Okay, so the main result is as follows. Essentially, it's, it's, it's in the title here. D sub P is a metric on Rn for all P greater than or equal to 1. But, written out as a lemma, for each P greater than or equal to 1, the function D sub P is a metric on Rn, and so the pair Rn comma D sub P forms a metric space. So, that, that, that's the, the main focus of this presentation. We're going to discuss the proof. Okay, so, what do we need to verify here? Well, essentially, we need to go through and verify that these three things hold for our d sub p for all p greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so I'm just going to do that now. Um, you may think that it's, it's the, the first two are reasonably uh, easy, but I am going to put a, a little bit of detail down, just, just a sketch of the proof, um, because this, this really is designed as a, a basic introduction. So... We want to show that d sub p is positive definite. Well, up here, this certainly is greater than or equal to 0 for all 
um, vectors a and b so Okay, so by this, you know, let's say P is 2, we mean the positive or non-negative square root here, and the same with the power 1 on P. Okay, so I don't think really anything's uh, any real details necessary for the f this part here. This part's a little bit more work, but again, it's just a little bit of algebra. So we want to show that this is 0, if and only if, x equals y, the two vectors are equal. Well, let me just write out the definition of this particular distance function or metric. Okay, now here I haven't written in i equals 1 to n, but ho hopefully that's clear throughout. Okay, so we're taking something to the power and we get zero. Well, that's, tr that's true if and only if everything inside this bracket is zero. So the sum must be zero. Okay, so what now? Well, we're taking the sum of non-negative things and they're all adding up to zero. So that means that each, each part of the sum must be zero. Okay, that's the only way these things, you take non-negative things, you add them all up and you get zero. The only way that that's true is that if all the things you're summing up is zero. Okay, so this is four. Okay, so now again you've got the power of something being zero. That, well, that's got to be true if and only if what's being taken to the power is zero. Okay, so now you've got the absolute value of something being zero. Well, that's zero if and only if. What's inside the absolute values is zero. Now, think about ha what we have here. This is true for i equals 1, 2, 3, etc. up to n. So the components of each of these vectors, the corresponding components, are all equal. So that, that, that's true if and only if the vectors x and y are one and the same. Okay, so we've shown that one holds. The next part is showing that two holds. Again, it's pretty um, straightforward, just a little bit of algebra. What we want to do is show that d sub p is symmetric. So let me just sort of put a little bit of detail down here. Again, let's just write this out. Now, of course I can just swap these things over within the absolute value sign and it doesn't um, change it at all. So, okay, so here we have, well, that's just d sub p of y comma x. So in other words, d sub p is symmetric. So again, this is very basic, just simple algebra, but uh, I am including it just as a, uh, sort of these things being sketched, just because this is an elementary presentation. Okay, now the much more challenging and more interesting part of the proof of this result is actually verifying part three, and this is where we use Minkowski's inequality. Okay, so that, that's the part that I've actually typed out. Okay, so we want to show that for each p greater than or equal to 1, d sub p obeys the triangle inequality. In other words, we want to show this. So the left-hand side is just um, d sub p of x comma z. And this right-hand side is just d sub p of x comma y plus d sub p of y comma 
z. Okay, so let's start with this left hand side and essentially it's just a little bit of algebra once again. I can insert two things into this absolute value sign and not change anything. I've inserted a minus y sub i and a positive y sub i. Then I can sort of re-bracket and I can use Minkowski's inequality going from here to here just with a sub i equals what's in this bracket and b sub i equals what's in this bracket here. Okay, so I get the um, inequality that I'm looking for just with these choices. Okay, so we have ticked off the three conditions of a metric for this general function d sub So d sub p really is a metric on Rn and the pair Rn comma d sub p forms what's known as a metric space. Now one of the motivations for putting this presentation together was using this general metric in my own research and I'll release those um, new research results in due course on YouTube. In the follow-up video to this one I'm going to, going to go a little bit further and show that this pair is a special metric space called a complete metric space. So I hope you'll join me for that.